Hello and welcome to another Game Artist Masters Academy tutorial. My name is Dustin and today I'm going to show you how to make realistic glass in Unreal Engine. Okay, so here we are in Unreal and this is our glass material. So let's go over this quickly before we begin. So here in our material instance, we've got some parameters for inner color, uh, outer color, and then the Fresnel blend between the two of those. So we can push that blend to the end or pull it to the center as we like. The next setting we've got is for this normal map and we can uh, input different normal maps here. We can control the tiling of the normal map. So if we want it tiled more or less, we can do that. And we can also adjust the flatness or whether this normal map kind of moves in or out. Next, we've got opacity. So we've got opacity controls for the inner opacity and the outer opacity. And then again, a Fresnel blend uh, between that inner and outer opacity. All right, and lastly, we've got this refraction, so we can kind of push and pull that refraction effect, and then we can, again, with Fresnel, push that to the edges of the surface like that. All right, so to get started, we're going to right-click, create a material, and I call this M underscore glass master. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to right-click and create a material instance. And I'm just going to call this M underscore glass example. I'm going to assign the material instance to my sphere here, and then let's open up the glass master. All right, so the first thing I want to do is set the base color blend. So I'm going to grab two constant threes by holding the, the three key and left clicking, and we're going to right click and convert both of these to parameters. While they're both selected, I'm going to put them in a group called color. I'm going to leave their defaults at black and let's go ahead and name them. So I'll grab the top and we'll call this outer color and we will grab the bottom and call this inner color. We need to blend between the two of these. So I'm going to hold down the L key and left click to grab a linear interpolate and I'll plug both of my inner and outers into A and B and then plug that into base color. To drive the alpha, we're going to use Fresnel. So I'll type in Fresnel, plug in the output into alpha, and then I need a, an exponent or a value to drive the, the exponent. So I'm going to grab a constant one by holding the one key and left clicking. We'll plug that into exponent in. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to call this color Fresnel and I'll set this default value to one. Okay, so let's grab this. I'm going to hit C to comment around this and now let's check this out. So we'll hit apply and let's open up our material instance. All right, so now in the material instance, we can see that we have this working. We've got our inner color, our outer color and a blend there. So let's grab the inner color and set it to outer color. Just need to swap those values around. Let's grab our inner color and let's set it to something quite different. And then with the Fresnel here, we can push and pull that. And we can see that happening in the scene live as well. So I'm going to just switch these pins real quick. Let's make sure to add this into our color group and our color is good to go. All right, next I want my base parameter, so my metallic roughness, specular, so on and so forth. Nice little trick, I'm gonna right click here and click promote to parameter on all three of these. And for the metallic, uh, I'm gonna grab all of these, call this base parameter. Uh, the specular, I'm gonna set its default value to 0.5, and then the metallic and roughness I'll leave at zero, but I am gonna clamp their slider max to one with all of them selected i'm going to hold down c we'll call this base parameters so now once we save this go back to our material instance we now have the ability to change the metallic the roughness and the specular all right so moving on down let's go ahead and tackle the opacity so right now opacity is grayed out. That is because we need to change our blend mode from opaque to translucent. Once that happens, you'll see that our metallic specular and roughness get grayed out, but opacity opens up. So in order to get the metallic specular and roughness back, we need to come down here to the lighting mode and change it from volumetric non-directional to volume uh, to surface translucency volume. Now we'll get those base parameters back and have the input for opacity. So we can start with opacity by grabbing a constant, 
converting it to a parameter called opacity, plug that into opacity, and we could set its default value to 0.5 and its slider max to one. Let's put it in a group called opacity. Let's apply it and let's check it out. Okay, so here it is, uh, kind of looking like a, a Metroid. We've got this opacity slider now and we can make it basically zero, which means it'll be completely translucent or we can raise it up uh, uh, to one and uh, it will become completely opaque. So that's fine. That's not, not bad, but that's not the best. So let's keep on moving. All right, so let's drive the inner and the outer areas of hourglass's opacity with that for now. I'm gonna duplicate this and let's change the name. So the bottom one I'm gonna change to opacity outer. The top we will change to opacity inner. We will lerp between the two of these and we will drive that alpha with the Fresnel, and we will need another parameter to drive the exponent. So this here we'll call opacity Fresnel. Gonna set its default value to one and clear the slider max. And the opacity inner, let's leave at 0.5 and let's set the default value here to one. So we have the inner opacity translucent and the exterior or the outer opaque. Now it's not working because my opacity for now here is default, defaulted at zero. So let's go ahead and put one in there. Now you'll see once this compiles that we've got more translucent center and a more opaque exterior. All right, let's grab these, hit C, comment that, and let's test it out. All right, so now we have this opacity inner and outer. And again, with that, we can kind of push and pull um, that effect with the opacity for now. We can control the inner opacity and the outer opacity. All right, next let's tackle refraction. So we want the glass to distort what's behind it. So to do this, we're gonna need another parameter. So I'm going to right click on the refraction, promote to parameter, and let's pull this down here. So the default, I'm gonna set to one. Okay, and let's also put it in a group called refraction. Let's apply it and test it. Okay, so here we can start to grab that refraction slider and push that refraction either in or out, but we want a little bit more control. So let's give ourselves some control to push that refraction effect out to the edges, once again, using Fresnel. So I'm gonna duplicate this and we will rename this to refraction Fresnel. We will plug this into a Fresnel. We will invert this with a one minus, make sure this stays in between zero to one with a clamp, and then lastly multiply this by our refraction parameter. Clean this up a little bit, comment, and test. All right, so with our refraction Fresnel, we can adjust that Fresnel effect, and then with the refraction Fresnel, we can push that out to the edges. So pushing that out to the edges with the refraction for now, then adjusting that refraction effect here. With the refraction, I find that a value of 0.5 in the min and 1.5 in the max tends to be a good a good range. So we'll adjust that refraction there and we're kind of clamping in it at 0.5 and one. And then we have the uh, the ability to make the glass seem you know denser or push that out to the edge there. All right, so the last part of this is gonna be adding in a normal map. So I've created this normal map in Substance Designer and it's just some clouds and some blurs, nothing too special there. I also created a blank normal. So let's grab these two, well, let's grab our blank normal and drag it into our material. For the example though, let's bring in our normal map. So I'm gonna leave this down here at the moment. I'm gonna give myself some room here for the normal. And the first thing I'm gonna do is plug this normal right into normal. So you'll see right away that we get the normal map affecting the glass. So we can take a look at it in the instance and in the real world. So we want some control over this. Now the first thing is to tile this. So I'm gonna grab a texture coordinate, a multiply and a constant one. I'm gonna call this normal map tiling. We're gonna set the default value to one, plug that into B, plug A into texture coordinate, and then plug those into the UVs of our texture sampler. Once we apply, we can then test that out. We've got our normal map tiling slider here, and we can just tile it up or down as we like. Now, I also wanna give myself the ability to flatten that normal or adjust the intensity of that normal. So I'm gonna pull out here and type in flatten and we'll get this flatten normal. So I'm gonna right click on the flatness and promote to parameter. And now we've got a constant uh, one parameter called flatness. Gonna set its default value to zero. I'm gonna set its max volume to one and we can now plug that in. Let's make sure all of our normal map parameters are in a group called normal. So now we've got our normal map here, we again have the tiling component and we have the ability to flatten this. So not only can we flatten this, but we can also 
kind of invert that normal map as well. Uh, right now my flatness is clamped to zero to one, but if we come back, we take the flatness and we remove the max. We can now slide this past one and start to intensify it and then down past zero and essentially invert this normal map. All right, so the last piece of this is I want to give myself the ability to have the option to use the normal map or not. So I'm gonna grab a static switch parameter and I'm gonna call this normal map texture on. So the the default I want to be just a flat normal map. So I'm gonna grab a constant three with the blue channel set to one. And I'm gonna plug this into the default here, which is false. So not until I turn this switch on will it allow me to input the normal map texture. Now Right off, right, off the, right off the bat, I might not want to use this specific texture, and I don't want this to have to load every time I do load this material instance or this master. So what I want to do is I want to use a blank normal map. So I can simply grab this texture sample and drag in this small blank normal map. This is just a 64 by 64, very small normal map, normal map compression, sRGB unchecked, a linear color. So in order for me to change this texture now with another texture, I need to convert this to a parameter. We'll call this normal map selector. Okay, so I'll grab all of these, call this normal, do a little bit of organizing here. You can hit clean up to make sure we've gotten every node there that's unused. And there is our complete glass material. If we check out our material instance, our normal map goes back to flat, we can check on the normal map texture on. This will open up the normal map selector. Right now it's got the default blank normal map. I can simply drag that normal map in and I've got my uh, normal flatness and tiling controls. One thing I noticed was that we still need to put all of these in a group called normal. All right, so there you have it, our final glass material. We've got our bra base parameters here. We've got our color parameters where we can adjust the outer and inner color along with the blend between those two colors. We've got our normal map adjustments where we can turn on whether we want to use a normal map texture. Once that texture is turned on, we can then select any normal map we like, control its flatness, control its tiling. Then we've got the opacity for inner and outer controls along with the blend between the two. And lastly, our refraction settings and the blend between those as well. That concludes the material. If you found this useful, please consider giving it a like and I will catch you in the next one.